Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. We are at my desk today for a very exciting video if you are somebody who is into personality tests, Myers-Briggs specifically. Me? Anyone else? Anyone else? Just me. <laughs> so two years ago I did this entire series on my other channel, because this channel did not exist then, where I did all sorts of different personality tests and quizzes. So we had Myers-Briggs, we had Enneagram, we had the colour one, and then even a bit of astrology and tarot thrown in there for good measure. Today I wanted to dive a bit deeper into Myers-Briggs because it is my personal favourite for no other reason than it is the one that I heard about first and know the most about. However, I still know fuck all, really, <laughs> in the grand scheme of things. But I have also found myself going down Myers-Briggs YouTube rabbit holes. Um, some explainer videos, but mostly comedy sketches. And I'm also very excited to tell you that later on in this video, I will be joined by Kristen, who is one of my favourite comedy sketchy Myers-Briggsy people. How is this a niche? Like comedy sketches about Myers-Briggs. I'm so here for it. So you may remember from the Who Am I series when I did the official Myers-Briggs test, like I paid for it from their website, I came out as an ENFJ, which was as I expected. I'm not going to explain that to you, mostly because I can't. I know what each of the individual letters mean, but the more I dive into Myers-Briggs, the more it's not about the individual letters meanings. No, no, no. It's got stuff to do with functions and like how all of those different letters interact with each other to create your dominant, your secondary, your tertiary functions. I mean, it's still just a personality test, but we're taking it very seriously. Now, these online tests are pretty limited. They can only get so much information from you, tell you so much about yourself. What you really want is to be typed by a person, by an expert. And I thought, where else do you find experts online other than Fiverr? And so I typed in Myers-Briggs MBTI into Fiverr, and yes, I found people who would type me. That's what we're doing today, baby. <laughs> so I paid three different people on Fiverr to type me. We're gonna go through what happened and what results they got for me. So the first two people gave me a questionnaire to fill out. Now, the first one. I was in a bit of a mischievous mood when I answered these questions. I think I was just a bit miffed and I wanted to make their life hard. The, the whole point of this is for them to get to know me so that they can do an accurate typing of me. However, in my head, I decided that it should be hard for them. Why, Hannah? I did answer all of their questions honestly, but a lot of it has got to do with like what you do say, what you don't say, because they gave me room to write 2,500 words per question. Was I gonna do that? No, I gave them a few hundred words per question. But the questions were, give a general description of yourself. How old are you? What's your gender? So I gave them my gender and age and that I lived in London and that was it. <laughs> describe your upbringing. Did it have any kind of religious or structured influence and how did you respond to that? I talked about being Jewish, but not religious. What's your opinion about the past, present and future and how do you deal with them? And I talked about being more of a future orientated person who's trying desperately to live more in the present and couldn't give a fuck about the past, which is, ironic coming from someone who did a history degree that like makes no sense to me but when it comes to my own life once stuff has happened I'm like what's next what's next what's next if you had to spend an entire weekend by yourself how would you feel would you feel lonely or refreshed basically I think I would feel great the first day and then lonely by the end of the weekend how curious are you do you have more ideas than you can execute Yep. What are your curiosities about? What are your ideas about? Is it environmental or conceptual? And can you please elaborate? This, I just talked about sex <laughs> and being a sex educator and how that's a topic that I'm curious about and how, I don't know, it is like big and conceptual, but it also is very relevant to people's lives and 
how they experience their bodies. Would you enjoy taking on a leadership position and do you think you'd be good at it? And what would your leadership style be? Well, I am in a leadership position in terms of this relationship that we have. And then also I have people who do work for me and I pay them. Um, and I think I'm good at it. I do like being in a leadership position. I was always that person in the group project who would take charge. I'm sorry. <laughs> are you coordinated? Why do you feel as if you are or not? And do you enjoy working with your hands in some way? Describe your activity. I just mentioned tennis and dancing here. Um, and then also like coloring in and doing jigsaws. Is that hand related? I don't know. How important are emotions in your life? Do you need logical consistency in your life? I'm not entirely sure what logical consistency is things having to make sense. And I talked about it being important to not be scared of emotions and just kind of like acknowledging them and like emotions are fine. What are your aspirations in life personally and professionally? Personally, be a parent, raise some kids. And then professionally, building something bigger than myself and achieving sexual liberation for all. <laughs> Doing my small bit towards that, because that is a big project. How long do you take to make an important decision and do you change your mind once you've made it? Here I talked about making decisions instantly when the opportunity arises, but only because I've spent like years thinking about it, but not really doing anything about it. Like for instance, this studio, I've been thinking about getting a studio for about two years and then like the perfect, place came along, the opportunity came along, and I made that decision basically instantly, but only because I've been thinking about it for two years. And then how are you in terms of social interaction? How do your friends and family and acquaintances perceive you? Is it easy for you to get along with strangers? Basically, yes, social interaction I find easy. I'm a sociable person in non-pandemic times. So those were the questions from the first person. The second person kind of had lots of similar questions, but I was in a better mood when I answered these ones. Um, so we'll see if that changes how they might type me. But they also had a question about my childhood, like what kind of person was I as a child and have there been any changes? Um, I talked about being quite a shy and cautious child and hating being told off, which is very much still the case, but I am a bit more outspoken than I was as a child. What job or field are you currently engaged in studying for and why did you pick it? I talked about YouTube and online stuff and sex education stuff. When you get irritated or angry, how do you usually deal with it? I talked about physical activity, hitting some balls. What would you say is your biggest weakness that is often overlooked? I talked about FOMO here. This was a difficult question that I am often comparing myself to others and not really focusing on myself and just like wanting to be somewhere else and doing something else. How would your friends and family describe you? I hate that question. I don't know. <laughs> I think that they would say that I'm friendly and sociable and excitable, but maybe also a bit self-centered. While making a decision, what usually runs in your head? So I answered this question so differently to the other one. Um, in this one, I talked about trusting my gut on making decisions. Both of my answers to this question are true. I just gave each person different information. Are you comfortable with your own emotions and expressing them? Talked about being comfortable with it in theory, but also expressing emotions is hard. Are you a creature of routine with lots of planners or more of an orderly chaotic person? I think we all know that I am a planner. In the battle of harmony versus ethics, where do you stand? In other words, would you prefer a white lie because it makes someone feel better or the truth because it's the right thing to do. I don't mind white lies if it's completely inconsequential, but I also believe it is possible to be honest and kind. I hate it when people use I'm just being honest as an excuse to be a dick. It's not how it works. Would you say you are practical and grounded person or more of an abstract head in the clouds kind of person? And how does this show up in your daily life? This is also a tricky question because I don't, I don't know. I think I'm more of a abstract person, but definitely not head in the clouds. Like I feel like I'm an abstract grounded person because you know, we can have the best of both worlds. <laughs> so those are my rough answers to the first two people. The third person, there was no questionnaire. This person was purely guesswork based on a photo. And this just intrigued me. So I went with it. This is the photo that I sent them. I think I made their job too easy because to me, this just like screams my personality or at least screams the like, box of my personality that these quizzes tend to put me in. But this person was going to do my Myers-Briggs, my Enneagram and my Zodiac based off this photo. Okay, so now the results. The results are in. So person number one, who I feel like 
I gave them a hard time. Let's see what they think I am. An INTJ. An INTJ? Hmm. Okay. They say that my second most likely type is an INFJ. Some sort of balance between my thinking and feeling functions. So, and they've also given me this, um, document that has my human needs and functions and like how they've typed me. This is what I'm talking about when I say that Myers-Briggs goes so much deeper than the individual letters, but I have no idea what any of this means. <laughs> but instead, I'm just gonna search INTJ and see what comes up. The architect. What is the architect like? Thoughtful tacticians love perfecting the details of life, applying creativity and rationality to everything they do. Their inner world is often a private complex one. Ooh, I'm mysterious. Rational and quick-witted architects may struggle to find people who can keep up with their non-stop analysis of everything around them. I don't know. These personalities can be both the boldest of dreamers and the bitterest of pessimists. Architects believe that through willpower and intelligence, they can achieve even the most challenging of goals. They may be cynical about human nature more generally, assuming that most people are lazy, unimaginative, or simply doomed to mediocrity. So about this. <laughs> I believe this is the worst part of myself because when I have thoughts like that, and I do have thoughts like that, I like to tell myself off. No, Hannah, people are brilliant. There's lots of amazing people in this world. Architects derive much of their self-esteem from their knowledge and mental acuity. In school, people with this personality type may have been called bookworms or nerds, but rather than taking these labels as insults, many architects embrace them. They are confident in their ability to teach themselves about and master any topic that interests them, whether that's coding or capoeira or classical music. I used to do capoeira. I don't think that means anything in this context, but that's just so strange that they say capoeira here. Architects can be single-minded with little patience for frivolity, distractions, or idle gossip. I mean, I love all of those things. That said, it would be a mistake to stereotype these personalities as dull or humorless. Many architects are known for their irreverent wit and beneath their serious exteriors, they often have a sharp, delightfully sarcastic sense of humor. I mean, isn't the whole point of these like descriptions that anyone reading it would be able to relate to any of it? Because I relate to some of it, but it's not screaming like, this is me. Um, but also, as I mentioned before, these descriptions are limited. Next, what did person number two think that I Am. Before I read my results from this person, I forgot to mention that actually they messaged me asking what my experience with Myers-Briggs had been and if I'd done any tests and what my results are. So I kind of feel like they're getting more information because I told them, yes, I've done tests before and I've either been an ENFJ or an ENFP. So they're already like working from there, whereas the other person wasn't working from that at all. So we shall see. I think this person will probably just like tell me I'm an ENFP or an ENFJ. And I would be correct, they say I'm an ENFJ. But I told you I was an ENFJ. I told you that. You didn't figure it out. After reading through your answers, I've arrived at the conclusion that you're an ENFJ. Ah, but they have acknowledged it. Since you already told me that you tend to get ENFP or ENFJ in these sorts of assessments, usually I'll address that as well and try not to make this redundant. <laughs> Let's begin. So these are my cognitive functions as an ENFJ. So FE, which I believe is extroverted feeling, that's my dominant. And then NI, introverted intuition, auxiliary. Then the third one is extroverted sensing. And then my fourth one is introverted feeling. So they've explained what this means. So my primary function is extroverted feeling, which means that my goals are often society or people focused, and I tend to organize my external life this way. And then they've given me lots of links to learn about functions. More Myers-Briggs rabbit holes for Hannah. Sounds great. But here's their reasoning, how I arrived at this conclusion. The fact that you tend to plan the major aspects of your life to keep them organized means you're more likely to be an E something J rather than an E something P type. E something P types strongly dislike being bogged down by plans and like to keep themselves spontaneous and open to experience. Whereas the EJs try to control their surroundings and their life to effectively organize it to keep it under their control. Your FOMO tendency as well would point to FE, extroverted feeling. 
Not only that, but your second cognitive function, the NI, coupled with the FE dominant, is a strong contender for planning as it is seen as big picture, vision for the future sort of thing. This would likely be why you sometimes plan things, sometimes even six months in advance. This was me explaining to them that as a child, I used to plan my birthday party six months in advance. But I, I guess I still sometimes plan things six months in advance. The third function of our personality types is usually known as our relief function, which helps us to sift through our emotions and usually helps us when we're frustrated or angry. So coupled with SE, extroverted sensing, it makes sense why you would resort to physical activities or doing things with loved ones, FE. This is beyond the scope of my brain. Okay, lastly, your tendency to not like details, but rather exploring big ideas makes me believe you prefer NI over SI, introverted intuition versus introverted sensing. And your career choice is a very fascinating one as it explores intimate relations between people as well as ties in with the stigma surrounding sex in society and how that needs to change. What a legend, what a legend, they get it. This could be due to the FE NI interplay. Not everything I've expressed here might be easy to digest. <laughs> You're right about that. Lovely, and I've got all of these links to explore further, how exciting. So onto our final person who is going to give me my Myers-Briggs, my Enneagram and my Zodiac based off this photo. So I believe that I'm an Enneagram seven and also my Zodiac is cusp Pisces Aquarius, but I honestly don't know what that means. So here we go. Oh my goodness, they've almost nailed me. I would agree this photo is definitely more of an ENFP photo than an ENFJ photo, um, but great. And then Enneagram seven, nailed it. It's because sevens are the fun ones. <laughs> and then they think I'm a Sagittarius, but I have no idea what that means. Oh, let me look it up. What are Sagittarius is like? Mm -mm -mm. Drenks, generous, idealistic, great sense of humor. Okay, well, that's clearly what this person thinks of me. Great. <laughs> so it's all well and good to be typed by online quizzes, written questionnaires, or even a photo, but nothing beats human to human interaction and seeing someone's mannerisms and how they speak and what they say. So I have invited to join me in this video, dear Kristen on YouTube. She is a Myers-Briggs comedian, comedy sketch person. Yes, that is a thing. Her videos are hilarious. And I have been a secret fan of hers for a few months now. And on a whim, I reached out and asked if she wanted to be part of this video to see if she could type me. And she said yes. So I am very excited to introduce to you, Kristen. I love doing this. I've always, I've, been like subconsciously and consciously typing people in my head, sometimes mm -hmm. out loud for a long time, like whenever I meet them at parties. Okay, so it's yeah, great. Yeah. When you when you invited me on here, I was like, sweet. Yeah, I, get I to give actually you permission do to do all of that. <laughs> Tell me a bit about yourself. So I'm Hannah, I'm 29, I live in London, I'm from Manchester. I uh, live with my husband. We got married last year. I make YouTube videos, I'm a sex educator. I like baking and playing tennis and reading. I think that I'm the kind of person who is simultaneously very much the adult of the group, but then also the child of the group, like at the same time. <laughs> okay, next question. What are usually your first thoughts in the morning? There's an alarm going off. Shit, I need to take my temperature because my partner and I are trying to conceive. So I'm like taking my temperature every oh, morning awesome. as part of that. So cool. I have to like remember to do that. And then it's more of a thought of like, if I had dreams and I vaguely remember them, then I'll probably be thinking about those. And then also I have a thought of like what I'm meant to be doing that day. So whether or not I can afford to snooze the alarm or not. And how do you have fun? I think like with my partner, it's very much like quiet fun, like um, hanging out, cooking together, playing board games together. Next question, how do you unwind? Reading sometimes, also sometimes like physical activity, like playing tennis or running, um, depending on what I need to unwind from. Again, cooking as well helps me unwind because it just kind of like occupies the mind. What is your idea of success? I'm one of those people who I think is just like constantly chasing success and then the I'm, 
I'm moving the goalposts, but then also mm. I think I'm heavily influenced by like like comparison and other people's goalposts as well mm. in my like evolved state in like the perfect version of me, which isn't me all of the time, obviously. I would think that success is being um, content and very much like living in the moment and having like valuable and fulfilling relationships and friendships with people and making a positive impact on the world even if it's a small impact what is one issue with issue that you see in society I'll name the one that obviously like I am working towards like in my job with what I'm doing mm-hmm. is the issue of bad sex education mm-hmm. <laughs> and I guess all of the things that kind of come along with that in terms of like sexism and misogyny and homophobia and transphobia mm-hmm. and the the lack of sexual liberation <laughs> for us all. Would you rather have a really meaningful conversation with someone or a really good experience with someone? Um, I think it, the experience, um, yeah. mostly because all I've been able to do for the last year and a half is only have the conversations. When someone disagrees with you about something important to you, do you feel attacked? Yes. <laughs> And I know I shouldn't, but yes. Okay, would you rather do something quickly but with 95% accuracy or slowly and perfect it? Oh, quickly and 95% accuracy. And in fact, I'll settle for like 70% accuracy. <laughs> like, I'm a, I'm a that'll do person. I am not a perfectionist. Mm, oh, that'll do. <laughs> when you get dressed in the morning, how do you choose your clothes? I ask Google what the weather is. <laughs> I just, I kind of, I like to try and pick something that maybe I haven't worn in a while or depends on if I'm filming if I want to if I want to wear something that hasn't been on camera for a long time or what I'm going to be doing that day I guess uh what do you prioritize in a debate or argument your perspective and values or the feelings of the other person one thing that I've learned like over the last few years is that it's it that to try and make it not about telling someone that they're wrong or like trying to persuade them to my point of view, but it being like this collaborative thing where you're both trying to find out what the truth is together. At the end of your life, what is the thing you would like to be remembered for? Being a nice person. Getting deep. (laughs) Oh, that's beautiful. (laughs) I love that answer. That's so sweet. Do people ever like call you insensitive or think that you're insensitive? No, I don't think so. Okay, when someone asks you for help or advice, do you go into empathy mode or problem solving mode? I tend to ask them what they need. But I think that's more of a like, because I'm a sex educator, that's something that I've learned to do rather Uh, than like my natural instinct. What about, what about before that? Yeah, I'm trying to think. I think I'm an empathy mode person, but I only say that because I get mad when somebody goes into problem solving mode with me. (laughs) Um, what makes you feel the most energized in your day? I love my work. And so like my work definitely makes me feel really energized, uh, especially when I get to like talk to people. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, because yeah. I'm basically <laughs> spend it alone. Okay. Do you get gradually drained in philosophical conversations or do you find yourself energized in them? I feel drained. My partner feels energized. <laughs> okay. What was the best and worst thing about lockdown for you? Like proper lockdown? The worst thing was just not being able to kind of like socialize and and then the best thing I think was just like quality time with my partner and realizing that we can do that kind of intense Mm. um, time together if you had five minutes where you guaranteed every single person in the world would be listening hypothetically (laughs) 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 that freaks me out but Maybe every single person in your state or country. Oh. What would that message be? My immediate thought was like, I would probably just panic from that responsibility and that pressure and just like play some music and just be like, let's all just have a dance party together. Let's just like shake it all out. Like, Love it. <laughs> like, Love it. Like whatever's Love going it. on with you, let's just like. <laughs> yeah, you guarantee that you have like speakers everywhere and you can play. Yeah, it'll just, that's it'll what be, I do. Really, it'll be about what song do you I know it's such a great <laughs> opportunity to get on my soapbox and preach everything that I want to preach, but I think the pressure would just be too much and I'd just be like, yeah. let's dance. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, good answers. I appreciate oh my that quickly. You, you seem to know yourself very well. Okay, but before you 
say what you think I am, if you have any mm-hmm. idea at this point. What's your Myers Briggs type and what does that mean to you? Oh, mm-hmm. interesting. What does that mean to me? I am an ESFP. Um, <laughs> to me, it's a means of being able to understand the mode in which my brain is operating most of the time, how I'm taking in information and how I'm judging it there thereafter. And therefore, mm. where my potential blind spots might be Um, where my potential weaknesses might be um, in terms of like what I'm naturally missing just because of the mode that my brain is in most of the time. Do you have an idea of what you think my my type is? I do. Go on, hit me. (laughs) I think you are also ESFP. Ooh, interesting. That's cool. I've never got an S before. Really? Oh my gosh. Okay. I I do think think a lot of my answers also came very much came across as P, but I I think I'm like very much a J. Mm, Like I'm super organized. I love planning Mm. structure. Like um So have you been typed as ENFJ, have you? ENFJ is like the main one. One of them typed me as an INTJ. Interesting. I know. I was shocked. But I just sent you the little yeah, cognitive great. functions thing that they sent Love to it. me. And I thought that maybe you would be able to decipher this for me because mm-hmm. I have no idea what it means. <laughs> I'm going to try and like sum it up as quickly as I can. Okay. So like, yeah, like Carl Jung has the, came up with, um, uh, in, the ni- in 1921, he came up with these eight cognitive functions based on how people are perceiving and judging the world and which basically says that there's a there's a mode through which you're taking in information and then an interior mode through which you're therefore therefore like um uh categorizing the information and creating patterns or ideas or values or rules about the information mm-hmm. And judging it thereafter, each type is is running with like a dominant one of those in conjunction with a secondary one of those, one of which is extroverted, one of which is introverted. So you can see there you've got F, T, S, N, but they've got an I or an E next to them. Mm-hmm, so the mm-hmm. E or the I means it's extroverted or introverted. Or introverted yeah. Um, so that means that it's either happening in the external world or it's happening in your internal world. Yeah. So it's either the extroverted functions are very much based on external feedback and manifesting in the external world. The introverted functions are about things that you're creating within yourself, whether you're aware of it or not. So, so um, FI, for instance, introverted feelings is about creating internal values. Um, introverted thinking is about, uh, logicizing, analyzing, and coming up with rules about like how the world works and how things operate. Introverted sensing sort of categorizes past um, sense data into like succinct categories that like value tradition and the way things have been effectively done in the past. So those, so they can come across as quite like, I don't know, like uh, those people who need things done a specific kind of way. And like they're rattled if it's not done in that way, mm, you know? Okay. Um, and the introverted intuition uh, uh, creates patterns in the abstract world, world about, um, which is also based on sense data, but it creates patterns about the future and like how things are going to play out and mm. all those sorts of things. But if you're like, say, for instance, I'm an ESFP, right? So the fact that I have S as my second letter, if you, if you put me next to like an ESTJ, Sorry, an ESFJ. So ESFP, ESFJ. You would think, mm-hmm. right, that's just one letter difference, right? But an ESFJ uses the cognitive, fu- cognitive function of introverted sensing as their second function. An ESFP uses extroverted sensing. Extroverted sensing is very different from introverted sensing. Extroverted mm. sensing is about the here and the now, the present. Let's have fun. Let's do. Let's explore the sensory world. I can see why and- you think that that might have been me. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe it is who knows <laughs> yeah and introverted sensing is way more like sort of um uh I guess oh, I don't want to say rigid but like they've created categories about how things work the best so and within the self so it's less open less exploratory but that's their secondary function yeah but everyone runs with um two dominant functions the first one is the one you kind of use like 90 percent of the time and the Uh second one works with that one so if you if you if your myers-briggs type starts with e it means your first function is an extroverted one if it starts with i it means your first function is an introverted one Mm -hmm. now but when people say you know 
you're an ESFP, you're an ENTP. We're both extroverts. That means the same thing. It really doesn't because because <laughs> both an ESFP and an ENTP are running with completely different extroverted functions. An ENTP runs with extroverted intuition, which is all about for like seeing and drawing connections between possibilities in mm-hmm. the abstract. Yeah. Whereas an an extroverted sensor, extroverted sensing as a function is about as I said like exploring sense data it's not about the abstract whatsoever yeah so if you say oh we're the same because we're extroverts it's like so different so if I am an ENFJ who knows at this point my dominant is extroverted feeling yeah and then my second one is introverted intuition intuition yeah yeah that's right well thank you so much oh thank you super fun um where can people find you on the internet so i am under dear Kristen on youtube i do personality sketches based on the 16 types i have a lot of fun with it um and yeah i'm on instagram as well under dear dot Kristen, spelt with an i n k r i s t i n mm-hmm. yeah and i uh, you know jump on check it out if you're interested in typology and personality theory it'd be great to have you So after I stopped recording that Zoom call, Kristen and I ended up talking for like another 15, 20 minutes all about Myers-Briggs and the different functions. And I love it. I love nerding out about this stuff. It's so fun. And it's really cool to talk to someone who's really dived into it and can answer like all of my questions. But I think I'm just like left with more questions because now I'm like, am I an ESFP? I didn't even think that that was gonna be a possibility for me. I always thought that I was just like, is it an ENFJ or an ENFP? But now we've thrown the S into the mix. Thank you so much for watching this video and coming on this journey with me. Let me know in the comments what your Myers-Briggs type is and how did you figure that out? Was it an online quiz? Was it somebody who is an expert in it? like typing you or however else, like your own research into it and coming to that conclusion, I would be really curious to hear. Do we have any other Myers-Briggs enthusiasts and experts in our community? That would be very cool. I hope that you're doing well. And yes, that is a vulva on the whiteboard in the background. It was for one of my videos on the Hannah Witten channel that is probably live now and you can watch it. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.